All right, in this video, I want to give a really simplified overview of the process of translation. Translation is a really complex process, and there's sort of endless detail we could add to this. And we'll provide some additional detail other ways. Um, but to, today, in this video, we're going to keep this process pretty simple. All right, so translation. <clears throat> translation is the last step in this central dogma of molecular biology that we've been talking about. And so previously, we've talked about DNA replication. And then in a video prior to this one, we've talked about transcription. Transcription produced this RNA molecule. And now in translation, we're going to read that RNA molecule. We're going to convert the information into a protein molecule uh, using the ribosome. So translation uses RNA information and produces proteins. Translation occurs in the cytoplasm because that's where our ribosomes are. Right? Translation requires the ribosome to perform this function. And we're going to talk about another molecule that is required as well. That's a tRNA. And then importantly, translation must follow transcription. Because we need that RNA molecule to read, we need the information in that RNA molecule so that we can read it and construct the protein that that RNA instructs us how to build. Okay, so let's start by thinking about the ribosome. And the ribosome is really central to the function of translation. We can't do translation without the ribosome. So let's add a little bit of detail about the ribosome's structure. So the ribosome is made out of two subunits. So there's going to be two major parts to the ribosome. And I'll build a little diagram of the ribosome here on the left as we go. So the first subunit is going to be called the small subunit. All right, so here I've drawn a picture of the small subunit. Just make it wide and narrow. We'll place it right there. The other subunit is going to be called the large subunit because it's much bigger. And the two subunits interact with one another. So the small subunit and the large subunit bind together to form a complete ribosome. Right, so the structure is pretty straightforward. We're going to add a little bit more detail. Like what do each of these subunits do and how do they do that? All right, so let's start with the small subunit. What's the function of that small subunit? All right, so small subunit function is pretty straightforward. I would say the small subunit functions to hold the mRNA, aligning it so the ribosome can read it correctly. So if I wanted to add to my diagram to indicate what the small subunit is doing, I'm just going to put an mRNA molecule in here. So here, the red line is going to indicate our mRNA. So the small subunit grabs onto it and holds it in just the right orientation so that the ribosome can use it correctly. So that's the small subunit. How about the large subunit? So before we talk about the large subunit structure, let's think, or sorry, about the function, let's think about the structure. All right, so this large subunit's a little more complicated than the small subunit. The large subunit has three sites within it, sort of three functional domains inside that large subunit. And so we want to name uh, those three subunits, and then we'll talk about what they do when we think about the large subunit's function. So within that large subunit, we're going to put three sites in there. One of them is called the A site. The A site, the A stands for acceptor, right? So I'm going to put an A site on my drawing of a subunit. I'm going to put it right there. The second site is called the P site, and the P part stands for peptidyl or peptidyl. Uh, that's the site that's going to form peptide bonds. Those are the bonds that hold proteins together. So the P site, I'm going to put right here next to the A site. So we've got the A site, the acceptor site, the P site, the peptidyl site. And then the last site is called the E site, and that's a really straightforward site. It stands for the exit site. So exit. So we have these three sites within the large subunit. One of them is the acceptor. This is an entrance. So something's going to enter the large subunit of the ribosome through the A site. 
and then we'll talk about how they progress to the P site, and then they'll go to the E site, which is the exit. So something's going to come into the ribosome through the A site, go to the P site, and then leave through the E site. So let's think about the function of this large subunit. What are these things that are entering the ribosome? All right, so in terms of the large subunit, what's the function? Well, the things that enter are accepted into the ribosome are called tRNAs. So uh, the function of the A site is to accept tRNAs into the ribosome. All right. Once a tRNA has gone into the A site, it will have the opportunity eventually to move into the P site, the next site over. So tRNAs move from the A site to the P site. When there is a tRNA both in the P site and in the A site, we can form a peptide bond between the amino acids that are attached to the tRNAs in each of those sites. So the P site, again, is about forming peptide bonds, the bonds that hold proteins together. And we form a peptide bond between the amino acid in the P site and an amino acid in the A site. I'll show you another diagram on the next slide that I hope will make that even clearer. All right, and then once an amino acid, has, once that bond has been formed between the two amino acids, the tRNA is free to move from the P site to the E site. Again, the E site is the exit, so the tRNA is going to leave the ribosome. Okay, so let's put this into perspective, uh, and we'll use an image that I got off the internet uh, that more clearly shows the structure of the ribosome and how it's interacting with these molecules, the mRNA and the tRNAs, in order to produce a protein, because that's what translation makes. So here's a better diagram. So let's orient ourselves to what's going on in this diagram. So again, we've got the ribosome here in the background. It doesn't indicate the small subunit versus the large subunit. For right now, that's not important. But here's the ribosome, and it's coordinating a bunch of molecules, uh, organizing them so that this process can work. So the first thing the ribosome does is it holds on to this mRNA. So the ribosome, the small subunit, is grabbing onto and aligning the mRNA. Then up top, the large subunit is coordinating these tRNA molecules. So the yellow molecules are tRNAs. Uh, if you've read about a tRNA, or we'll talk more about tRNAs later, uh, on one end they have an amino acid attached, and on the other end they have an anticodon. Those tRNAs enter the ribosome at the A site. So one of these tRNAs, this one here, is in the A site. So I'm going to draw an A site on there. When the P site is emptied, this tRNA will eventually enter the P site, but right now this other tRNA with lysine on top is in the P site. So we have a tRNA in the A site. It was the most recent one to enter the ribosome. We have a different tRNA in the P site. It entered the ribosome just before this one did. And then again, the last site is an E site, the exit site. That's where tRNAs leave. So this tRNA is leaving, and that represents the E site, exit site. So again, let's look at what the ribosome is doing with these tRNAs to promote the production of a protein. So we have our two tRNAs in the A and the P site side by side. They are stuck in the P site because their anticodons stick to the codon in the mRNA. So you can see the anticodon, part of the tRNA, is complementary to the codon in the mRNA. So this complementary base pairing sticks the tRNA in this position. At the other end of the tRNA, we've got the attached amino acids. Between the amino acid in the P site and the amino acid in the A site, we have formed this peptide bond, connecting the two amino acids to one another to form a protein. And we actually have a protein, a growing protein chain here, lots of amino acids connected together. That's a protein. So what's going to happen next is that the ribosome is going to move to the right one uh, codon. The tRNA that's in the A site will end up in the P site. 
this one that is in the P site will leave through the exit, and this tRNA that is waiting to enter the ribosome will be able to move into the uh, empty A site. We'll make another peptide bond and grow the amino acid, sorry, grow the protein one amino acid longer. So that's translation. Again, we took a really simplified view here. There's a lot of deeper detail in this process. The last thing I want to mention before we end for this video is that that translation process occurs in three steps. And those three steps are just like the steps we saw in transcription. But in translation, slightly different things are happening. So we're going to use the same terminology. We're going to begin translation with initiation. This is where the ribosome assembles on the mRNA. Then we're going to get elongation. This is where the ribosome moves down the mRNA, reading the codons and connecting together amino acids into a long chain as we go. And then the last step of translation is termination, where the ribosome gets to a certain codon, a stop codon. That sends a signal to the ribosome that it's time to stop building the protein, that you've reached the end, it's okay to be done. And the whole ribosome complex, the large subunit and small subunit, they disassemble, releasing all the pieces, including the manufactured protein. So these steps, initiation, elongation, and termination, are the same kinds of steps that we saw in transcription, but slightly different things are happening because it's translation. So we'll end there. Uh, as always, I hope you'll ask questions if any come up so that we can help clarify, and I will talk to you again soon.